to another new Heights bonus video presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. That's right. <laughs> and brought to you by Wally's World. That's right. Walmart doesn't just have everything for you this holidays. We have your thing. Welcome to your Walmart. It's time for the weekend preview uh, where this week we are, are going to preview our week 14 games and check out some mm-hmm. fan art. Mm-hmm. And watch a couple submissions in the Kelsey Clips category for the greatest highlights of all time bracket. That's right. Jason, what do you got for us? Yeah, let's look to look ahead to week 14. We got Bills at the Chiefs in Arrowhead. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, Bills defense. Bills are six and six uh, and are still very much in contention to make the playoffs. So they'll be uh, they'll be extra fired up for this one. Um, you know, we saw them uh, not that long ago. Actually, it was their last game um, in week 12. And uh, they they were on point. They were clicking. Josh Allen is playing a hell of a game. The Bills' defense are currently the number eight passing defense in the league and number five in scoring defense. Uh, how do you and the Chiefs receiving group prepare for one of the better passing defenses in the league? Well, you accept the challenge, man. You see what's real, and these guys, uh, they play well together in the back end, and um, I'm pretty sure they get after the quarterback pretty good. we got to step our game up, man. we got to put up touchdowns, man. You can't put up field goals against a guy like Josh Allen. Uh, last week I was telling you earlier on in the week that getting seven on the board instead of three, uh, you know, that uh, that makes a big old difference l- later on in the game. So we're uh, we're going to get fired up for this one because we um, – we got a lot to prove uh, to ourselves. Yeah, we've been getting after it this week in, uh, in practice. So, yeah, this is a big game, and I think it's going to be a game that is going to have both of you guys really fired up. You guys obviously coming off of a loss. Buffalo on the uh, brink of playoff contention. It's going to be one for the ages. Yeah, we're going to be in for a dogfight, man. And uh, like I said, you you got to put up points against Josh Allen, man. Uh, uh, that dude's dangerous, and their offense is, you know, high-powered. On top of that, uh, I think the last time we played him, we actually lost last year during the regular season. So we know that this team's capable of beating us if we're not on our A game, man. So we uh, we better be in our A game and playing, uh, you know, great football all across the board. Because uh, beat a team like this, you got to play uh, offense, defense, and special teams, and uh, do it effectively. Eagles at Cowboys Sunday night football. Cowboys home record um, after Thursday's win against the Seahawks. The Cowboys now have won 14 straight games at AT and T Stadium, and for the second longest home winning streak in franchise history. This is the longest active home winning streak in the NFL uh, to date, and the Cowboys are just the third team in the NFL history to score at least 30 points in each of their first six home games. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Eagles haven't won in Jerry's World since 2017. I did not know that. It's been a while. So that's a really uh, big-time home field advantage for uh, the old Cowboys. Why do you think they, they have that out there? Is it just like their fan base is that rowdy? or No, I mean, I, I don't know, to be honest with you. I think that um, they're a really, really good team. And when Jerry World was first built, we actually had some success out there. We won a late uh, regular season game to go to the playoffs in 2013. We had been doing really well against – the Cowboys at home, but uh, as you just said, it's it's been a while since we've won there. Been a while since anybody's won there. It's fourteen straight, and that yeah, takes you into last year. They are a very very good team at home, and it's been that way. I'm not sure why it's that different. I mean, obviously every team is going to be better at home, but they've been uh, uniquely better at home. Is it that rowdy? It's it's rowdy. I mean, it's loud. It seats a lot of people. Yeah, I think it's it's a good challenge for us coming off of especially a game that we uh, we want to make a, a lot of improvements and get back on the right track with last week all right well the uh playoff atmosphere and rivalry is definitely going to be in the play again you guys are headed into a game that has playoff like level of attention around it and it being a big time divisional game and you win the division you're in the eagles still have the number one seed in the nfc with a 10 and 2 record i ran out but the cowboys are right behind them in the division with a 9 and 3 record do you like playing uh with like extra hype like do you let that like build your concentration and stuff to games like this towards the end of the year well yeah I- I don't know if I like the word hype. I like playing games that are meaningful. meaningful. I like playing games yeah. that there's more at stake. I mean, there's more energy to them. Obviously, the media hype around it is bigger. This is a huge football game for both teams. Uh, you know, not only are the Cowboys nine and three, Forty Nine ers are nine and three, uh, the Detroit Lions are nine and three. Um, you know, this is a huge game for both teams uh, with a lot of playoff implications. It's it's a big challenge for, for us. It's a big challenge for them, and it's going to be a fun game Sunday night. No doubt yeah. about it. Well, you guys beat the Cowboys in your first matchup of the season this year at home, and uh, unfortunately you haven't won both those regular season games against the Cowboys since 2011, since you've been in the league. 
Yeah. And that just tells you how hard it is to beat a team twice in the NFL. No doubt. No doubt. Let alone if you see them for a third time in the playoffs. Uh, the Eagles-Cowboys rivalry is one of the best that the NFL has ever seen. It gets uh, the fan bases fucking hate each other. Uh, <laughs> do you have any favorite Eagles-Cowboys game or moments in your career that, that pop out to you? The one for me is the last game of the year in 2013 because it, it put us in the playoffs, and we needed to win that game um, to win the NFC East. So there's a lot at stake. It was Chip Kelly's first year. Um, so, yeah, that was probably the the biggest one that we've had against Dallas in terms of like most at stake uh, game against the Cowboys since I've been in Philly. Nice. Well, that does it for our week 14 game preview. Let's uh, let's move on to some uh, good old fan art, man. Let's do it. All righty. From at my dog is better at my dog is better. No, it's not. Uh -uh. My 13 year old daughter made this. Let's show her some love. Mm, That is Great work for a 13-year-old. That's impressive. At Chiefs, or hashtag Chiefs Kingdom. Uh, this drawing is Travis. That's right. It's Travis it's, yeah. filled in completely with lyrics from the Beastie Boys song, You Gotta Fight for Your Right. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Can we zoom in on this? How do I zoom in on this? You just zoom in like you would zoom in on anything else. Um, That's pretty damn, that's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. It's got me with the uh, the goatee on there. It, it kind of looks like Jalen Hurts. <laughs> it's because it's the goatee, man. Do you and Jalen Hurts look similar? I don't think so, man. Do you see it? Do you see what I'm saying, though? No, I know exactly what you're saying. When I first glimpsed at it, I was like, oh, nice of picture of Jalen. But when I first saw it, I was like, is that Jalen? And then I was like, oh, it's Travis. Yeah. Without uh, skin color and a goatee, it just looks like a nice fade with a goatee. And that can, yeah, that's fair. Shout out to Jalen for having a nice fade and a goatee. Yeah, shout out to Jalen. Artist Joseph Doggerty uh, created a Jason Kelsey mural in South Philly and shared it on his Instagram with the caption, Kelsey Green. Look at that. Do I look that good? Tell me, it, it, it's, I feel like they took some artistic, like, uh, liberties. Yeah, that's a good one. They definitely, they took out your wrinkles, so it makes you look like younger. For sure. Makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I was asking. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> this artist, Joseph Doggerty, has also painted Bryce Harper, Joel Embiid, and Jalen Hurts murals. Big athlete mural guy. Um, nice. That's dope, man. All over the city, I'm assuming. I've, I don't think I've been on a mural. I'm not really sure. There is a mural down by the stadium that is definitely of me, but it doesn't have our names on the jerseys because I think that the Eagles want – the things to live on past the players or whatever. Like there's no likeness. So this is the first one that's like clearly, obviously Jason Kelsey. Yeah. That's clear as day that I'm aware of. I, I don't, I don't think there's another one. Jason Kelsey's more of like a statue guy. You know what I mean? You need to be over there by the, by the Rocky statue. The reason I'm saying, I don't think there's another mural of me is because there might be because Philadelphia, I don't know if you know the stress, Philadelphia has more murals than any other city in the United States. Ooh, even more than Kansas City has fountains? I, I believe it definitely has more murals than Kansas City has fountains. No fucking way. <laughs> There's no way. Oh, my gosh. It's like a mural arts. What is that called? Mural arts? Ah, whatever. Um. Anyways, yeah. Big mural city. That's cool. Pretty darn cool. I well, love street hopefully art. The, really uh, hopefully the, um, the city's giving everybody these okay. The okay is to do all these murals. Most of these are okay through the city. There are obviously there are some that are uh, have not been okayed, and they kind of just get grandfathered in. But a lot of these go through like the proper networking, and but to, especially the ones that are really well done, that are done by artists that do them all over the place. Those are usually, gosh, what is that organization called? It is the something of organization of mural arts. All right. Yes. Where'd you see that? There's no way that's it. Mural Arts Philadelphia. That's not it. <laughs> it's got to be it. Whatever. Yeah. You got well, it, Trev. Yeah. I grew up on the east side of Cleveland. I love some street art, baby. Shout out Who to uh, old Joseph Darty for uh, showing love to Philly sports, man. 
and uh, taking away Jason's wrinkles. <laughs> Moving on to the greatest highlight of all time bracket. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's close this thing out with a couple suggestions uh, from the Kelsey Clips category, the greatest highlights of all time bracket uh, that we're putting on here. And again, uh, like we said last week, we're working on a special reveal to go along with this bracket. So uh, thank you to our, our 92 percenters for uh, all your patience as we clarify everything, get everything rolling. First up, potential nominee for Jason. That's right. Jason. At a crazy ass name uh, that I'm not even going to try and pronunciate uh, on YouTube. You got a YouTube. Yep. Highlight when Jason blocked against two dudes downfield against Washington in 2018, allowing Darren Sproles to score uh, from around Washington's 15 yard line. I mean, yeah, I think I know the play. Um, I definitely know the play. Yeah. You were blocking a guy with one hand and then kind of opened your left. Yeah. I remember this. Happening. Oh, nice. I commented it on, on Twitter. One of my old tweets, shout out to Darren Sproles on his comeback, but please watch Jason go to work on, on these men with one arm. Absolute hashtag beast. I didn't hashtag that, but beast. What a beast you are, Jason. That is, uh, that's definitely one of your, one of your best clips. For sure. I think that yeah. might be the best one because it was a touchdown and got two guys on. It was definitely a nice little sprint draw action. Not too many guys are better, better at running that play than Darren Sproles. Sean McCoy did have 400 yards. My rookie year on this play alone. And here is Sproles. Look at Kelsey working downfield and Sproles. Damn. Uh, I almost got picked. If you go back and watch the start of it, Jonathan Allen jets off the ball. He almost gets me, uh, but I make it around him. Uh, great play call. Zach Ertz gets to the backside line. Look at Zach. Ertzy. Ertzy Just flying through him and out. getting the backside backer. Let's fucking See, go. This is why, like, I, this is why offensive line play is fun to look at because everybody sees me coming around and blocking the linebacker. You got the down block by Isaac Samalu. Jason Peters sells pass, kicks him upfield. It's just a textbook play. And then, dude, Nelson Aguilar blocking on the perimeter, getting everybody involved. Listen, I know it's a highlight of me, but really, that's like a teach tape for how everyone uh, needs to block. You the run play. sprint draw, so, yeah, yeah. Good job, guys. All right, now, and for our next uh, Kelsey clip, a potential nominee for uh, myself. That's right, from R Junk 12349 uh, on YouTube. Uh, overtime catch versus the Chargers last year. Kelsey, exclamation point, good night, touchdown. That's right, I believe that's Joe Buck's words in the, uh, in the clip, <laughs> if you guys want to go this ahead and watch this clip. one. I love this one. Here is Kelsey. Kelsey, good night, touchdown. How many guys did you make miss on this play? Let's count them. I'm going to count how many guys. All right, my dude. Boom. One. Yeah. Two. I mean, it didn't. It's like, I know. Okay. Let's say you forced two guys to miss, but you weaved like a snake through the, like, it's crazy. Gosh, that's a great play. I don't know who's like, this is like a, I don't know that anybody sees the field quite like this, man. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to give you your flowers here, Trav. This is such a, instinctual and creative way to run through a defense. You know what I mean? I can break it down. So I, I initially, I knew it was, uh, it was zoned to the field, uh, knowing how they play their cover four though. They usually latch with the, uh, with the backside. That is they'll man the backside or the, the three. So you knew the, you were manned up with that. I knew I was uh, uh, kind of manned up with an off with the coverage player trying to keep everything in front. So I'm like, got it. All right. I can run across field as soon as I get past the the middle zone defender. I'm going to kind of give my eyes to see if Pat wants me right now on the hash. I know that it's a flood concept. Everybody's going the way I was initially going. So I'm like, there's nobody on the other side of the field. So nice. I catch the ball, immediately think other side of the field, make one guy miss, make a second guy miss, and then just felt the cut back to the left. Um, and not going to lie, as you can see from my excitement and – kind of like startledness i had no idea what to fucking do so i just fucking threw up uc i was like uc yeah. is really good this year hell yeah baby yeah. um so I, I gave uc a shout out baby go bearcats and yeah that was uh that was a fun one man the overtime thriller in uh in la yeah this is great so i didn't know this looking at it right away but this is a one by three formation you're the only like receiver that can catch a ball on that side of the field so you know that corner is matching you and because of the concept, you know everybody that's to the field 
is staying over there. Not only are they staying over there, they're taking everyone further to the field. Yeah. So the moment you catch this, once you see the corner running with you, you know if you plant and come back that there's not going to be anybody else over there. I mean, you got to have a plan, you know? You got to have a plan. <laughs> And then you got to just play inst- instincts. You know, if yeah, I turned no. and I know I can't break it back, you know, now I'm getting vertical. You know, now I'm just getting right, as many right. yards as I can and trying yes. to split defenders. But when I, fu- when I saw that I could kind of, you know, make the first defender miss and get out the gate there to the, to the right and, um, got a few downfield blocks by, by some guys. Um, haven't seen the clip, but I think Byron Pringle might have been a part of that. Um, yeah, either way, there's, uh, there's guys blocking downfield and, uh, and um, and sure enough, man, nothing better than an overtime game winning tutty, baby. I'm not gonna lie, there was one guy that blocked thirteen. That was it, and I don't think it would have mattered. Byron Pringle, baby. Sometimes <laughs> you just got to get in the way, man. You got to make a guy just you know, run around you. But yeah, that was a fun one, man. That was a fun game. That's a crazy, crazy touchdown. I think I had 190 yards or something like that. I almost yeah. had a 70 or like 80 yard touchdown, and I'm just. And I get to like the twenty, and I'm like, I'm not gonna make it. I know it. exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> and I was just like, hold on to the ball, and I just get yep. dragged down at the one yard line like a yep. fucking jabroni. What a scrub! But we scored the next play, so shout out to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, before we wrap this up, uh, we got a tweet from a ninety two percenter who has a question about the bracket that we should probably get to the bottom of from yeah. at Donna. Five eight four nine seventeen eighty four at New Heights mm. Show. What category will great runs fall in for the great play brackets? Uh, example: Marshawn Lynch's run in New Orleans. We've referenced that play a lot. Um, wait, we've referenced the one that was in Seattle. The yeah. Marshawn one that's in New no, Orleans. No, no, no. It was it was in New Orleans when he played for Seattle. It just registered as a uh, earthquake in Seattle. I guess. Hmm. All right. Um, the four. Of you, uh, the four you mentioned didn't really include runs by running backs and quarterbacks. Do we expand the catches section? What do we call that? So we have can't do that anymore. We have catch. We have uh, Jason and Travis plays. Yeah. Are those the four brackets? Well, technically, it could be in the can't do that category because he, uh, when he jumps in the end zone, he grabs his. Puts the ball. Hold my dick. Hold my dick. Can't do that anymore. So technically, we could throw that one in the uh, can't do that category. What's the fourth one? The big guys. Big guys. I mean, any run can go into the fat guy highlights because there's always fat guys blocking for the runs. Yeah. Um, should we add another bracket for great runs? I think runs? we just add that catches, greatest catches, greatest runs. I think we just right. combine that Let's category. Just Let's just Thanks, combine that category. Thank you for uh, – because we can't forget about the greatest runs, you know? Yeah, I think – yeah. I'm with you. I'm with that. She was also wrong. The run was in Seattle. See, I knew it. Against New Orleans, though. She knew it was against New Orleans. Yeah, she was half right. Shout out to Donna. I'm I'm here for all things Donna. Big fan of Donna's. All righty. Uh, that wraps up this weekend preview. Uh, the bonus video has been presented by Walmart. That's right. Walmart doesn't just have everything for the holidays. We have your thing. Uh, boy, isn't that true. Welcome to Walmart. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to the New Heights channel on YouTube so you know when we're doing the full shows and these bonus video clips. And don't forget to comment on this YouTube video on social media or on the Club 92 website with your clip suggestions for the greatest highlights of all time bracket. Uh, Thank you as always, 92 percenters, for tuning in. We certainly appreciate it.